loading the stream. We are live. Thank you very much for joining. This is Miles Beckler, milesbeckler.com. And today I have a very special guest. I have Tom Johnston here with me. Hello, Tom. Hey, Miles. How you doing? Good to meet you face to face for a change. Absolute pleasure. So Tom was one of the early adopters of the 90 day challenge, which is how my wife and I started our first business. And that's how I've really kicked this channel you're watching off. And Tom has now crossed the 90 day mark. And I wanted to interview him to understand a little bit about the the mindset and, and the heart and the, the whole process, the challenges, the good and the bad to give you kind of another uh, voice, right? It's one thing to hear me say it, and then it's another thing to hear others say it. So Tom, thank you very much again for joining here. It's my pleasure, and, and you're the expert voice, and I'm the novice, and maybe people will be able to relate to me a little bit. And there's knowledge to be had from people at all levels, and that's really, I'm so excited to have you here. So real quick, if you could give just a little bit about your background, your story. Sure. Yeah, we'll make it quick. So my, again, my name's Tom Johnston, and I'm TomJohnston.com or excuse me, TomJohnson.org. And, uh, you know, I uh, had a career in finance in my 20s, and then I became a diplomat in my late 20s and did that for 13 years. I was focused on economics and finance. I was all over the world. I lived in Jamaica, Latvia, Washington, D.C., Croatia, Ukraine. I also lived in Belgium in high school. So like Miles, pretty international lifestyle. Uh, but as I got to be about 40, I sort of just felt like I was starting to stagnate a bit career-wise. I was doing very well, but internally, I just wasn't feeling as challenged and was wondering about just what I want to do for the long haul. All my best friends when I was a diplomat were always entrepreneurs, a little bit rougher and raggeder and looser than the average government employee. So I decided I also uh, hit sort of bare bones financial independence. And that's actually what I'm really focused on as an entrepreneur is teaching people how to get to financial independence. So I bailed a little over a year ago, and uh, now I'm learning this whole new uh, skill set and game, which is internet entrepreneurship. And it definitely has been more challenging than I expected. Certainly starting over was a bit of a rude awakening. And that's me in a nutshell. I'm from Colorado. That's where I live now. And I'm delighted to be here talking to you. Great. So it sounds like you went through a career phase so you did kind of hit that early retirement point already uh, recently it sounds like yep. yeah i probably hit it about 40 41 i kept working for another year year and a half just to kind of pad it so that i wasn't as under pressure that way like if you have inflation kick up or things like that i didn't want that sort of the income from your assets and the expenses to your assets to be like perfectly equal i wanted a little bit of a cushion there which I definitely would encourage anybody to do because you don't want to be under a lot of stress. Perfect. And if I can kind of give yeah. my version of that uh, to people who are watching. So the, the financial independence retire early generally means live a frugal lifestyle, save as much as you possibly can, invest that in a very secure kind of investment vehicle like an index fund. And then yeah. when you have 25 times your annual income, you theoretically can withdraw 4% for life without touching your principal. And at that point, you've retired early. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't exactly, yeah, that's close enough. I'd probably be a little more conservative than 4% withdrawal rates and a few things like that, but that's the basic idea. The only other thing I would say, and this is a big part of the mission that I'm on is, yes, frugal, and I write about frugality all the time, but, you know, what I did to reach financial independence and why I think most of us can do, it's not really about self-denial. It's about being smart, right? Like, you know, buy a two-year-old car instead of a brand new car and save the $10,000 in appreciation, just... Things that, you know, I did, like my friends when I was a diplomat would fly halfway around the world with their family to go on vacation. And, you know, I was posted in Latvia. I'd get in my car and, like, drive to this amazing island in Estonia. And, you know, my vacations were, like, a 50th, 50th of the cost. But I honestly think they were just as interesting, probably more exotic, actually. Man, lifestyle creep is yeah. interesting, especially as incomes rise, people's expenses can yeah. rise. So I think that's a great starting point because what, I, what I'm what i hearing here is that you built a life experience through work and through years and you've made conscious decisions for decades to totally. be conscious of what you, and now that you've reached that point, which was your goal, you're able to look back at what you did to get there and now you're trying to share that with the world through your content. Is that correct? 
Absolutely. And the other thing is by hitting that goal, I was able to come out here and do what I'm doing now, right? If I hadn't reached financial independence, I honestly don't think I would have left that super high quality job that I had because I was building towards it and it just didn't make sense. But once you kind of get to that point, your options really open up massively. And, you know, the only other thing I'd say is I did start investing like at 19. And then I started reading books about financial independence at like 22, 23, right as I got out of college. And on my uh, website, I have like all sorts of stuff about the key books that I used um, that there was just like really five books that I read right around 23 to 25 that just honed in my thinking. And this is like before retire early financial independence was really even a thing. I mean, this is pretty old school and, uh, and it just changes your way of looking at the world. It does make you a little bit out of sync with uh, a lot of mainstream society, but actually you can totally manage that. I mean, people who knew me and my colleagues, I don't think they thought I was odd or they just, you know, you could totally manage perceptions uh, in a way that you're just like, grooving you're just being a little bit more strategic about what you're doing brilliant so i've got this theory yeah. i haven't done a video on it yet but it's um it's head hands heart we learn it mentally which you did in your 20s we get hands on with it and you put yeah. into practice what you learned and then you hit a point where you know it by heart when you're there that's the time to go build the platform and I share love it dude. that's fantastic that's yeah. awesome a future video sneak peek for everyone yeah. um so now, at what point did you start looking at the internet as like, okay, I want to try this internet marketing thing? Where did that rabbit hole appear? Yeah, great question. So it's pretty funny. Um, so my second to last tour was in Croatia, and I was the head of the economic section there. And we did a lot of stuff there promoting entrepreneurship in Croatia, and we worked a ton with the tech sector. And honestly, it's almost like I started to believe my own propaganda. Like I was always going out there giving speeches to high school and university students, like you should consider entrepreneurship, it's super important, it's the way of the future, and if you're gonna do it, do it technology-based, digital-based, you can leverage that, you can reach people all over the world, super low expenses, which by the way has blown my mind to get as far as I've gotten, I mean, I bet you I spent less than $1,000 so far on this whole venture, probably about 1,000 with lights and three-year you know, hosting service and all of that, and so, all my buddies were like these really intense, super successful entrepreneurs. Some of them were tech. And I was like, if you can't beat them, join them. Now, I'll be honest, I realize now that I've like bailed. Those guys were like 10 to 20 years deep. They were like you, right? And I'm like, whoa, what am I doing? Like, honestly, I, I really was naive in understanding the amount of work that's involved in the skill set that I lacked. Um, you know, I, I had become a very good, if I may say so, diplomat, but starting over with this stuff um, is, has been intense, but great. I mean, that's the whole point. I, I felt like I'd plateaued and I'm definitely not at a plateau anymore, probably in a bit of a valley, but I'm climbing back up that hill. So. That's awesome. So then you went to YouTube at some point and encountered my videos, yeah. um, just kind of looking yeah, around. Actually, great, great question. You know, I did a Google search. This goes to your whole point of search engine opti optimization and I, I searched on some like spiritual topic and on like you know page three I found your wife's website and I read this uh, I read this article and I was like wow that's really cool who is this person and so I saw some of her videos and she was like all over the world and I was like man maybe she's like married to a diplomat or like somebody in the military like this lifestyle I couldn't quite like figure it out so then by hook or by crook, I kind of linked through found you and I was like, whoa, this guy's like, I mean, this was pretty early. You were still in your 90 day challenge and you were just like spoon feeding me exactly what I needed because honestly, I bailed. I started making a website, but I clearly lacked like the vision of like this stuff. I mean, honestly, I hadn't even heard the term sales funnel. <laughs> like, I mean, I was raw. And so you were, I just liked you. I thought you had a cool personality. And then actually the very, I asked you a bunch of questions early on. And the first thing I asked you was like using persuasion techniques to scam people. And then you made a video about it, right? I don't know if you remember that. And I you made do. a video. Yeah. It was in a park and, in Auckland that I made that video. Yeah, that was a good question. Yeah. Awesome. Totally. And I was like, okay, this is a good dude. Because honestly, I do think in this space there are a fair amount of like, sketchy people who are just yeah. trying to like make the quick buck and that's just not me at all. And so I felt like I could relate to you. And so here we are. And, and, uh, you know, definitely those first few videos were super helpful. 
Um, there's a lot of things still though that like, what's your why? I don't think I have that completely hammered out yet. And I think it, once I do, it'll help me even take it to the next level. And one other thing I'll mention, just because it was one of your earliest videos, and I think it's really relevant to your viewers, is that video you talked about, like produce more than you consume. Like I realized, okay, I've been spending a couple months here, like not just looking at your stuff, but sucking stuff down. And it's like, you know, there's like diminishing marginal returns. Like I got to get out there and I got to go. And, you know, not too long after that, that's when I kicked in on the 90 day challenge. Perfect segue. So there, there's definitely that like analysis to paralysis point and totally YouTube's goal is to make it really easy for you to go down that rabbit hole and spend seven hours straight watching video after video. And at the end of it, you're like, you're fried, your eyes hurt and you've heard so many approaches that you're just, you're like confused. And it's literally like, I'm going to go like take a nap. Cause yeah, I'm awesome. to be perfectly honest, what I did, I liked you, I liked your videos. I figured, you know what, I'm just gonna kind of like stop searching. I'm just gonna like put put myself under Miles's wing. You know, like I could have I could have researched like a thousand lighting scenarios, but instead I was like, yo, Miles, what do you recommend for like lighting? And you like did your little thing and you sent like some links and I just bought them. Like I didn't go out and do and I honestly I'm sure there's probably something that's like slightly better for my needs but it's not worth 10 hours of my research to do that. And actually, you know what you need once you're doing it anyways, right? So I needed to just get the basics and get going. And so I've kind of, you know, used you as a, my mentor, if you like, like a digital mentor. Awesome. And I'm, that's yeah. been my whole goal. And I think that proves for people watching, that's how affiliate marketing is supposed to work, right? Be genuine, be honest, yeah. put the viewer's needs first at all costs. And when yeah. you have that moment of like, I don't really want to go down this rabbit hole of researching lighting. What do you use? Here's an affiliate link on Amazon. I get like 3% commission. You get what you need. Totally. Everyone's happy. Yep. Um, so this, this brings us to a really cool point and you were very active in the comments for a while and you you had to throw your hat over the fence moment which I'd like you to talk about and then you yep. disappeared from comments for like two and a half months. So explain that transition from kind of commenting on every video, being there with me to kind of like, here's my hat over the fence moment and then what happened when you disappeared? Yeah, totally. So, you know, first of all, in all honesty, I had kind of like a stable of 40 or 50 blog posts like, in various degrees of completion. So when I was ready to throw my hat, like I wasn't completely under the gun. And actually I'm sure a lot of people who do this, they're gonna build up to that. And I think that's a good thing. But yeah, I was reading your stuff, I was learning. Frankly, I spent, while I was kind of commenting with you, probably a month learning WordPress. And that was actually really long hours. Like there's probably two weeks of just like sun up to sun down and then some, like even to like midnight just learning WordPress, getting a couple of websites going. The other one I have is mightyinvestor.com. And, uh, you know, asking you those key questions like about naming, you and I went back and forth on like good names, stuff like that. And then honestly, and I'm sure your, your viewers can totally relate, like I was kind of nervous and I was nervous about the exposure. Like honestly, as a diplomat, you're super behind the scenes usually. Like it's a very, low key thing. Like if you're getting a really high profile, you're making an error. <laughs> like your ambassador is the one with a high profile. And so for me to like pivot, and honestly, I'm still really learning that. Like my my personnel, even in this conversation, I'm actually probably a, a bit more of an animated person, but still getting comfortable with video and that kind of stuff, you know? And so I don't know, like finally I was like, F it, you know, either you're gonna do this or you're not. And the way for me was to do that. And I pledged a thousand dollars to the charity of your choice, which is a lot of money for me. I may be, you know, financially independent, but I did I didn't get there by blowing a thousand dollars. Like, you know, like I'm pretty strategic about this stuff. And I took that for real. I mean, if I'd missed a day, I would have definitely stepped up. So I don't want to belabor this, but you know, I stepped up, did it, and then just dove in working on those posts, especially those first few weeks. I mean, if anybody goes and looks at I have like a 90 day scorecard. I mean, in those early days, there were some days where I did like 16 posts and that's like, some of those are already half written, but so yeah, I just like disappeared. I felt like I got what I needed from you to get the start, right? Like, cause I couldn't even start until I had like some idea of what I was doing. And then, you know, it was time to go to work. And then I reappeared, I don't know, a couple of weeks ago and said, Hey dude, I think I had a question for you. Probably that's probably why I reappeared. And uh, here we are. 
So, and that's brilliant. Um, the word I like to use for that feeling is vulnerability. Um, being totally. vulnerable and putting the heart on the sleeve and getting out there on camera, even if it's just written word, it's it's really, Absolutely. it's it's pressure. I literally, I mean, I've been behind the scenes doing this stuff uh, full time for seven years now. Uh, I've been making money online for 14 plus years. And I literally just started last year teaching this stuff um, because it was, there's all those thoughts. I'm like, ah, do I really know enough? And so good on you for, for kind of being vulnerable. Um, way to get some leverage on yourself. When I started my 90 day challenge, it was also with a thousand dollar donation to the guy who challenged me to the, the uh, charity of his choice. And that was that, that little bit of leverage I needed to like hell or high water. This is getting totally. done every day. And um, I'll add a couple things if I can real quick. Yeah, sure. for me, once, once that pledge was out there, and by the way, for those of you out there who are in whatever financial circumstances, I mean, it doesn't have to be money. It could be like, I'll do this for my friend or I'll go volunteer or, or whatever. I just want to say that. But, um, so for me, the second that I call it the thousand dollar guillotine, it was like hanging over me. And I mean, honestly, from that point forward, I got out of bed and I got that post up like before I did anything. And that was pretty much true for all 90 days. And the, and the other thing I want to say, if you're nervous, and I'm sure almost anybody who's watching this who hasn't started this stuff is the truth is you're going to have like a zilch for traffic when you start. So you're way less exposed than you think you are, um, you know, like if you don't announce to your friends and family you're doing this, you're going to have like no traffic for a while. And so I would say like, if you want to be like quiet about it at first and do it, just get going. You'll still feel exposed because it's out there and it's always out there. Even if you take it down, Google's going to have mirrored it somehow. So there's still that exposure, but you know, and oh, one other thing I want to say real quick is, um, I really think this 90 day challenge isn't just for people who want to be these like expert marketer people. I think anybody who wants to do entrepreneurship in the modern world, learning how to build a website, learning how to market, learning. I mean, I still so suck at design. Like some of your viewers are going to look at my websites and I mean, they're so weak still. And I know that, but all of that is like, say you want to have a software as a service company or, you know, all sorts of stuff like drop shipping, all of this, you're going to need these skills. And I think the earlier you can do it and just get out there and do it. And honestly, that's me. Like I'm definitely going to keep doing money management and, uh, you know, teaching people how to invest and because I just love it and I want to share it a lot like you, but whether or not that's exactly what I do to do my internet entrepreneurship for the long haul is still a work in progress for me. And you talk about that all the time, like people start and then they pivot and, you know, I'm, I'm certainly aware of that. And you can't pivot till you start, right? You got to head down that path, totally. hit the fork, and then you hit another fork, and then you hit another fork, and another, and all of a sudden you're doing something very different. So, in your 90 day challenge, um, did you have like I like to say use the term that life happens? And did you have any points where it got like, uh oh, like something new entered the space, but yet I've made this commitment, and it almost made it extra challenging? Oh, dude. I mean, I, if people want a bit of inspiration, I actually had a pretty significant health issue pop up. Um, and it had to do with getting a concussion skiing. And it was something that, yeah, now I got it before the 90 day challenge, but the issues had lingered a bit. And so I decided to go out to Utah and do this like super intensive treatment for, you know, if you have a little bit of lingering concussion sy symptoms and it was like all day, you know, five days a week. And honestly, I like pre-wrote a bunch of blog posts. I didn't have them completely done, but I had them mostly done and I just worked around it, but for sure, like just getting, and, and you know, I, I don't want to exaggerate it. It wasn't like I was like totally debilitated or something, but I mean, that was definitely like, I had to keep it going. And also, you know, I think I got the flu at one point and you just keep on grinding. Um, but honestly for me, and this is what I felt was such a great sign for me from the 90 days, I actually really enjoy it. Like I enjoy the process of writing the blog posts. I, I probably like the writing more than the videos at this point because I've done it a lot more in my life. But, and I just like, you know, getting it out there and playing with the website and you know what I haven't, that's definitely figured out like, how am I going to monetize this and turn it into anything financial? And, and I do want to do that. I have that motivation, but you know, just doing it, I really like, it's quite creative in its own way. Also, I mean, you're just like, <laughs> 
I'm so many of your viewers are going to laugh because they're just going to think I'm old. But I feel like, yeah, I'm part of the Internet. <laughs> you know, like this thing that like is the big thing that's like destroying everything in its path. Like all the retail stores are getting crushed by Amazon. And I feel like I'm getting on that wave and that's the future. And, you know, if you're going to make a living and you want the skill set for sure. And I feel great about like learning about like how does Google search algorithms work? And as you know, because I've commented, I kind of hate that stuff. I, I hate that I'm having to write to those algorithms, but that's the reality, man. And you yeah. got to. You gotta... No, it's brilliant. And I think one thing that's kind of cool is like if you think so, the web is disrupting pretty much all industries. And then if you even totally. look down to WordPress, uh, WordPress, I believe 30% of websites on the web yeah. are WordPress based. So WordPress is kind of like disrupting the website in many senses. And then content marketing and all the traffic is either on, generally speaking, like 80 plus percent of traffic is on YouTube, Google, and Facebook every day. Like that's, that's it. Absolutely. Right. Yep. So if we're not showing up there and if we don't understand how they work in those platforms and how to connect, because when we build a website, we're essentially an island in the middle of the ocean and there's nothing connecting. But when Absolutely. we start to get little bridges to our island from Google and Facebook and all these, that's where the traffic comes from. And like you said, a lot of the viewers are younger and like someone in their 20s or 30s who jumps in and literally just does this exercise just for the experience. When you come out the other side, you'll probably have more like any big corporation. You'll probably have more totally real world marketing experience than 80 to 90 percent of the marketing department at <laughs> Fortune 500 companies. Yeah, it's, it's just so true. And it's a skill set that's it's going to be utterly crucial for you know going in the future and actually you know you just touched touched upon like how do you get google youtube these people to notice you that's actually phase two for me right night 90 day challenge was like just dive in you're in the deep end you're swimming you're barely keeping your head above water you've created some content and for me one thing i really have to do is i gotta like niche it down and get narrow i'm just like all over the map i started a second website because like I was writing so much different stuff and it didn't even really hang together in terms of niches. So I have mightyinvestor.com, tomjohnson.org for like different stuff. But now I got to figure out like how do people find my websites because they're not really finding it. And the truth is I wasn't really focused on that. That was also because I'm still shy about it. And I wanted to kind of like, you know, do the baby steps and then worry about getting traffic. But that's what I got to do now is start, you know, getting the word out there. And by the way, thank you for having me on your show because I'm sure it will up my uh, traffic quite a bit relative to where I've been. So I, I really do appreciate that. Yeah, and I think, it, I think it's so yeah. valuable for people because it's one thing, like I said, for me to say it, and it's another thing to hear you go through it. And I think, you know, the way kind of maybe an analogy is you went to the gym and you've been working on arms and chest, right? Just the, the brute force. And we got to yeah. remember to mix in leg day where you end up looking yeah. like that guy who has got the big arms, big chest, and little chicken legs, right? And totally. that's the SEO. But you are now, you've put your voice out into the blogosphere. Um, you could, and I'm not necessarily trying to say what you, to do from here, but I mean, there's so many options. You could go be participating in local forums with a link in your signature. You could compile your best blog posts into an ebook and put it out on Kindle. Really? You can, yep. There's so many, you just comment on the other blogs and people talking about your subjects and topics. And eventually Google starts to notice that, oh, Amazon links over there and oh, he's got, blog posts, links from all these other comments. He's commenting, you know, you are a part of the blogosphere and Absolutely. eventually you do get rewarded. So when you enter this idea of, I'm going to do the online entrepreneurship, did you have like a, like a men, like an idea of, I bet in a year, I bet in a few months, I'll be able to be making some money. Did, was there any belief that you had before you took the leap? Yeah. I mean, well, first of all, you know, I told you I was inspired by these dudes that I was working with overseas. I mean, these guys like were, they founded like uh, software as service firms that got like American venture capital investing, multiple rounds. These guys are big time. They've, you know, they've got like, well, not big time, but they've got like 50 employees now. And they're, you know, they started with angel investing and they, they really, so yeah, I mean, I didn't think I was going to go from zero to hero in a half a year, but I definitely had this idea that I would. You know what I what I thought I would have honestly, and maybe this is just unique to me, was greater clarity faster. I thought you know within like six months I would just be like full speed ahead, building a business with very great clarity, even you know potentially like bringing on employees and blah blah blah. And then I realized like I just don't have enough knowledge and experience to really have 
clarity in terms of exactly what I want to do. And as you know, I mean, you do it, you learn it by doing it. And your story of like the different things you did from like, I don't know, roughly year 2000 to when you started what's really succeeded for you guys in around 08, 09, I'm thinking. That's is when we like, started it. Yeah, it right. really started working for us in 2013, but I've been fiddling with making money online since the late 1990s. Totally. And, you know, that's where I said earlier I was naive. And I, I honestly was. That's okay. I mean, that's life, right? You learn by getting in there and doing it. And I certainly know a lot more now than I did. Um, but yeah, to answer your question, I mean, I, I, I would have thought it would move quicker. And I think there are those people, those rare people who for him that happens. But even, you know, it's just like you. And, and for example, I would say your channel on YouTube has had a lot of success pretty quickly, but that's built off of like a decade plus, decade and a half of experience. And even like, there's one guy whose uh, blog I like, uh, Zen Habits. I don't know if you ever read that. Oh yeah. But that, that guy was like a professional writer for 20 years, like literally making his living. And you can really feel he was building off, and he was already publishing freelance online. And so it does, I mean, anything in life that's worth doing takes a lot of time and investment. So one of the things I really, get into in my blogs is I don't like hacker mentality. Like I'm going to shortcut my way. I just think it's like, I don't think it really works. And even if you make money, I don't think you're really happy. I think it's like you plant, you cultivate, you harvest. It's a longer process. It's much richer and more rewarding. And you know, a lot of, I won't name names, but some of these most famous guys that are out there kind of teaching people entrepreneurship, it's all about like the shortcut and some of these guys are millionaires, but they look kind of miserable and desperate and frenzied. And I think it's just that they're they're not into like actually giving back to people and producing things that are sincerely valuable. It's more just about, I don't know, like make money or, or make money as fast as you can. Nothing wrong. I love money, actually. There's nothing wrong with making money. But I think you can do it with tremendous integrity and that's making the world a better place. And fulfillment is everything. I think that's the the key for me, for my wife and I. I have people who are like, well, why aren't you scaling your business and, and offering these services? And you could be running a multi-million dollar agency. And it's like, ah, that would crush my lifestyle. Like, no thanks. Yeah. I love, it's all about lifestyle and that balance of enjoying and doing what we love. Another thing that I feel like, I don't think you've said, but I'm, maybe I'm iterating and I'll ask if this is true, but it sounds like you're enjoying the process. Yes, I am enjoying the process. I'm super enjoying uh, learning internet marketing, learning the business, learning, creating content. But as I think I've hinted to you once or twice in the comments, the thing that I'm struggling with is it's so much more isolated, uh, than a regular job, right? Like I used to work on, I mean, being, being in a diplomat's like being in the military, it's very tight knit, especially when you're overseas. It's like your little tribe, you're like working together, all these crises happen, you're dealing. And that's the one thing that, I mean, I don't want to be negative. You said I'm enjoying the process, but this is the one thing that I'm really like, how am I going to manage this is, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not married. You have your wife, which you're doing this with. And so it's like, uh, there's ways to manage it, but I haven't quite worked that one out. And I think anybody who starts down this road is going to, is going to confront that. But beyond that, I, I love it. I love what I love is not having somebody else set my agenda. I love, and I also love not having employees that I, don't that I can't really fire because in the federal government, like you can't really fire them unless they commit a felony. So it's like I had people above me and people below me who usually were awesome, but sometimes were like disasters. And what I love is just every day, you know, it, and that's the entrepreneurial personality, right? Is, you know, pretty much a self starter, somebody who really just wants to do their thing and get out of the way. Let's go. And for me that, and again, that's why I clicked with those people and I was like, you know what? This is more my, my way of life. And so here I am talking to somebody who's like that. Absolutely. You get full control, you get lifestyle freedom. It yep. is and can be a lonely experience. Um, one thing I would recommend is go to meetup.com if you haven't and look for a local WordPress meetup, look for local internet marketing meetups and just kind of like there is a community, especially where you're located. There is a big oh, tech hub. amazing. Yeah, totally. Huge tech hub. A lot of lot going on and it takes a bit of effort to go find those groups. And I do agree um, that it, it can be a lonely experience, especially on those days that you're up with coffee at 630 and you're still like burning the midnight oil and like, oh yeah, I need to go outside once today type days. They, they happen. Totally. Totally. Um, but you know, there's, 
there's no perfect situation. There's pros and cons to everything. And, you know, it's on, it's on, it, I mean, this is a side conversation, but it's on all of us to create that rich social world that we want, you know, and it's not about, it's not a matter of how you're making a living that really makes that happen or not. So, right. Right. Yeah. And so as we close, I thank you again very much for your time. Totally. Just, so people have, it's the mighty investor.com. Nope. Nope. That's a different website. Unfortunately, it's just mighty investor.com okay. and Tom Johnston.org. Mighty investor.com is just about career management, savings and investing. And Tom Johnston.org is everything that doesn't fit into that, that I was spewing out during my 90 day challenge. Um, honestly, and I, I welcome your thoughts on this before we close. Some of it I'm not convinced is so awesome and I'm thinking of pulling it down. I'm just curious where what you think about like, you know, you throw stuff up, you know, and then you go back and kind of hit the edit button. Because as, as I said at the beginning of my, this was, and this is not my personality, it was all about quantity, not quality. And I would really encourage your viewers, like if you start this, you're going to edit the hell out of yourself. Don't do it. Just like you say, that garden hose, let that, let that nasty stuff come out of the garden hose by just working and writing and, and producing. But I got to admit, some of it's a little borderline. <laughs> and I would recommend going back and editing. I wouldn't recommend deleting. Um, yeah. Google builds an index of your website and Google gotcha. loves to see us making things better and more robust over time. Uh, that's gotcha. kind of, we're entering the age uh, or the time of the aging web. And there's a lot of kind of like forgotten about blogs that people started 10 years ago and have never touched. So Google takes actually people who go back in and kind of re-massage and Makes rework sense. with old content very well. Um, any questions for me before we kind of wrap this up? You know, I always have a million questions for you, uh, but uh, I try not to, you know, I'm actually quite choosy when I jump on there. It's probably like one out of five that I've thought of because I don't want to like, become like spammy, but you know, before, if I have any questions, the main thing I want to say, and, and probably I can channel a number of your viewers out there. I just want to say thank you uh, for up there for free. I mean, honestly, you answered a lot of my questions, especially in the early days. And I really appreciate your time and just sharing. I mean, you could be monetizing this and I hope you do actually. I hope, I hope it's, I think, you know, I'm all about diversification as an investor. I mean, if you get a second business thriving, that really helps you guys from a diversification point of view. I don't know if you've thought of it from that point of view, but um, so I, I hope at some point you do. But the main point is just thanks, man. You're a good guy and, and we can feel it in your videos and super appreciated. Yeah, it's my pleasure. Yeah. And I am making money from this at this point, like uh, the hosting, right. I've got some affiliate things and yeah. it's like, people just can't see it very clearly, totally. right? It's not, it's not yep. bold. I don't have a megaphone saying, ah, go buy the, you know, I, I really try to keep it subtle. And my goal is hundred percent with you on uh, many eggs in many, many, many baskets yep. is ultimately the best way to go. Uh, I think audience growth is that's where the value is in that relationship totally. with the audience. So that's where I pour my heart out. And, um, yeah, it's my pleasure, man. Thank you for the kind words. And it really is, it's its an experiment and I want people to be able to not only take the words that I'm saying and be like, okay, cool, I'm gonna act on that, but I need to make sure every action I'm making in public view follows the exact words I'm saying. And I feel like I am doing what I'm teaching and totally. I, I don't like the income report thing. I, I'm making thousands of dollars a month at this point with this Yeah, platform. I wouldn't do it. I yeah, mean, you no. can if you want, but it, it just becomes bragging at some point, you know? And it gets and people focused on the wrong metric. It gets people focused yeah. on the wrong metric. The real metric is how much did I do today? Did I give it my all today? Did I publish and did I pour my heart into my content today? And if people keep doing that, the money will appear. If people keep chasing the money, I got to get money. I got to get money. It just never works. It's crazy, yeah. but it never works. And you know, that guy, Mr. Money Mustache, mm -hmm. he, uh, that guy's making like 400,000 bucks a year now on that thing just through affiliate nothing else right and it's all just volume and he, he does have a lot of useful perspective i don't agree with him on everything at all actually i um, mean i'll probably put something out there so i think he's a good guy he's here in colorado as well um but i'll probably put something out about that at some point but yeah and and i actually think the way you're doing it more subtly is probably what i want to do i'm fortunate enough that i'm not you know desperately trying to make money as quickly as possible and that probably helps a lot. Um, and I think that you can see that in what you're doing because you're focused much more on quality and giving back. And, and so it's a win-win all around, really.
It is. And when the pressure's off, you can come from your heart and you can be more authentic and you can do things for the right reason. In the pure hustle business plan, you probably miss those and you don't need those. But I yeah. kind of laid out a plan of how to get that pressure off first. And my whole yep. thing is like, people are like, well, how do I make 2000 bucks a month? Go get a job. Literally go go find a, even if it's a part-time totally job, agree. a bartending job, go do something to get the pressure off and grind on this and that's was my wife and my path and that's why it worked is because if people smell desperation on your content ooh, they're gone totally. they know you have yeah. ulterior motives and the moment they feel yeah. that they're out um and we have one chance yep and you know by the way my my only tweak on that and i think you know this from looking at a few of my posts is i don't say go get a job i say go get a effing kick ass job like you know you're gonna work 40 to 50 hours a week so go get a job at a tech company. And you know, people can do that. It's not just for programmers. And, and I know, cause I have family that work in these firms and used to work in HR. And I know, I know very clearly like how you get into these types of jobs. And, and also you're probably learning skills that are relevant to the online marketing. Um, so I totally agree. And you know, for me, I actually, I went the really long haul and like got to financial independence and then, uh, you know, took, took the plunge. And I think that's, Nobody's gonna buy that as, as what you're selling. But but the point is, I think, and, and this is the other thing is, you know, I don't know why, but the whole world's so anti-jobs. Like if you get the right job, it's actually quite meaningful, it's quite interesting. Uh, you know, I guess that doesn't sell well. But I actually, you know, I think jobs, if it's the right thing and you like it and you care about it, um, are a deep, deep part of what makes life satisfying. I mean. Look at like people who retire and they just go to seed or the idle rich or just like mental. I mean, this stuff matters. And really, I think that being an entrepreneur has become trendy in the last few years. It's not totally. for everyone. It takes a very, mm -hmm. very distinct personality type. Yep. It takes the ability to just just delay gratification in a way that most people can't. And so there's this kind of like, I think it's the unicorn nature, the VC money that thought of that lifestyle. And the funny thing is that the number 18 employee at Facebook who got options is going to make a whole lot more oh than you, me, and every viewer who's ever going to watch us will ever make combined in our lifetime. Um, I totally agree. I used to, I did a lot of corporate work straight out of high school. I didn't go to college. I learned sales. I got a good sales job. I think sales skills are amazing. I did inside sales and outside sales. And then I got into customer service. I was managing a department of 30 people when I was, I think 20 ish, 20, 21 years old, um, working with uh, kind of getting experience working with the CEO, the COO, the marketing department. And, and those skills have been so valuable for me. It's oh, dude, I can, I can see them on your YouTube channel. Like I literally am like, cause I had that training when I, I worked at Charles Schwab and like the customer service, you're like, folks, thanks for your patience. I'll get that link back up. You're the, like, you totally have that training and I can see it before we leave. I actually want to throw one thing at you and get your take on it just cause I think it's interesting and and it might be relevant to your to your viewers and that is just interacting with you even preparing for this video and like i can really feel in ways how you're more entrepreneurial than i am maybe because i haven't learned it or whatever but like what you do you just go and you're going like 60 miles an hour and you're not making it perfect and you just keep going and like when we were prepping for this you're like yeah let's do this okay i'll send you a google hangouts we'll do it boom like my background, anything like this, we would have massively prepared. Now, of course, it's like US government, you don't want to like embarrass your country. But nonetheless, like, you know, I'm still learning to just be much, much looser, right? Because if you're going to be an entrepreneur, you have to move so much faster, you have to be so productive with your time. And you have to be able to not do it perfectly. But you know, I'm not saying you don't do a good job, but you're creating value very quickly and efficiently and then you're circling back and fixing as needed and I'm curious what your thoughts are on that because I'm really feeling that's holding me back honestly speed of implementation is so incredibly powerful and it's like there's a an interesting motorsport called drifting that I'm a big fan of yeah. and it's literally the goal is to be sliding out of control but yet being in a controlled slide out of control and I think that's very similar to how entrepreneurship is it is about blazing forward and I make decisions very quickly 
um, and I change them very slowly. But the moment I get a piece of data or enough data to prove that actually this road's going this way, I flip the wheel, I throw the e-brake, I stomp on the gas, and we are full speed over here now. And it it, it is kind of like, you know, in the early videos, I was full on click funnels, and now I'm full on not, and I'm showing exactly the opposite of that. And that happened through experiences, and it's, it takes a willingness to step into the unknown and run full speed ahead in the unknown, in the dark, you're in a forest, you got a blindfold on, it's gonna be okay because we can always circle back and it, it's kind of like, yep. um, man, I don't know where I got it from. I think maybe racing cars back in the day and, and being a little out of control in life has- Did you race cars? Back. I didn't know that. A, a bit, yeah, yeah. And I'm, I'm eventually we'll oh, get back cool. to it, but we're, we're building an off-road beast right now. Um, but yeah, right it's, it, it is. It's like um, you have to be willing to go full speed into the unknown. And the unknown is so scary for people. Our mind makes things yeah. more scary. Oh, it's going to be terrible. Everybody's going to laugh at you. No, they're not. Nobody's going to find it, right? Like yeah. literally no one can laugh at you if they can't find it. And that's what your first 30 posts are going to be. But if you stick with it for so three, true. four, five years, you can create literally. I have friends, people making six figure monthly incomes. I know totally. I like I know guys making seven figure monthly incomes. Like what? Like it's just it's crazy. And the funny thing is hanging out with them, they're normal people. They're doing the same sort of things you are doing and I am doing. They've just either focused it on a really specific problem that they've created that they've got a great solution for or they've been doing it longer than we have. Totally. And they've just, they just kept going. still doing those same yeah. things. Exactly. Hey, and most by the way by the way, you know, you said you like go oh, Eclipse Funnels. I checked them out based on your recommendation and just real quickly, because it's an incredible story. Like, you know, I signed up, did the two week thing. Video like number 16, that guy, I forget his name, the founder. He goes on there and he's like, yeah, man, you know, we just want to get you started. And he, he does the hard sell on their really fancy version that's like a thousand bucks. And he's like, and you know, if you can't afford this, we've arranged this loan for you, you know, because we know you're just going to get it going a couple months, you'll be making so much money. I was like, bye bye, delete. Like, point. This guy's just about. I don't want to like trash anybody, but this is about making money. And like, you know, people like me who are like really early on, we don't need to be taken on debt to like figure these things out at the very. It was so. I was just like, later, dude. Yep, it's all about a lean startup, and that's why I put out the whole DIY sales funnel series that's out now that shows people how to literally for about 300 bucks ish you can get a, a whole funnel going, and it saves you over $3,000 worth of ClickFunnels, and I'm like, I don't want those 40% commissions. I don't need that. I have a business. I want them to invest that 10 bucks a day in Facebook ads or in a developer yep. and a designer cool. and some SEO to really, really build an asset because I think to tie it all the way back to your niche and what you're doing, what, you're, what we do, these are assets. My YouTube channel, my audience, my website, my email list, like your website, these, when you build an email list, it's an asset that can pay you for the rest of your life. Yep. That's crazy. And as, and as long as you're doing stuff that you love, because honestly, I love this stuff. I love talking about investing. I love, I love the process of investing and looking at companies and I love it. You know, I always have. And oh, by the way, one other thing, if I may, and I know we got to wrap up like, and uh oh, you know, even sorry about that. I got a phone ring and I don't know if you can hear it, but you know, even friends and family who uh, like, if they're not in your niche, they're not going to read your stuff. It's hilarious. It's only people who really love your niche that are going to come. And, and that's a great thing. You kind of attract people that have similar passions and interests. Awesome. I really do appreciate your time. Um, when we hop off of this, will you send me a quick email? I want the link to, I want to just get your actual URLs. I'm going to put them in the description totally. so all the viewers can watch. And I'd really appreciate that 90 day kind of um, documentation that you have where you showed what you did each day. And that's awesome. Um, so yeah, and I, I sincerely apologize about the the phone uh, total rookie error there. No so. worries, man. We're gonna wrap here. I thank okay. you for your time, and we'll catch you on the next video here. Thanks for joining.